So we've been hearing about a lot of new processors that are going to be coming out in the next few months. Uh, while I've already covered all of AMD's goodness uh, that was showcased at their virtual uh, CES show, by the way, you can check out that video right over here, Intel actually told us a little bit about their desktop CPUs. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on what you can expect with Rocket Lake S, uh, like the upcoming i9-1100K and the Z570 motherboards. Now, those make up for a platform that's supposed to go up against the best that AMD has to offer, but that might be a huge challenge for a few reasons. So let's dive in right after this. Say hello to proper airflow with Be Quiet Pure Base 500DX, a compact mid tower with a mesh front panel and three 140mm Pure Wings 2 fans that are silent and capable. Enjoy tasteful ARGB illumination, a Type C port, and an easy case to work in. Check it out below. All right, so remember that 2021 is supposed to be the year that Team Blue puts the pedal to the metal and at least try to match uh, Ryzen and Zen 3. The last time we actually heard from them was them actually talking about the Golden Cove CPU architecture, Alder Lake, Alder Lake? Alder Lake and some more. But based on what we've seen so far, Intel's actually still looking at past technologies uh, to prop themselves up, especially on the desktop side. Now, some people say that sometimes you need to take a step backwards in order to move forwards but I still think that AMD's lead in the desktop market uh, might still stick around. Now, as for Rocket Lake, I guess uh, it's a slow trickle of information about these new CPUs because, you know, they're just giving a little bit of details here, a little bit more there. Basically, it's like a trail of breadcrumbs from Intel uh, just because, you know, it keeps people talking about them uh, because AMD is just... They're killing the news cycle right now. Okay, so let's go over a little refresh about how all these Intel names and how Rocket Lake was created. Back in 2019, Intel launched Ice Lake, which used the Sunny Cove architecture along with the updated Gen 11 graphics. Intel's taking that core design, keeping it around with some modifications and calling it Cypress Cove. Intel's current generation Tiger Lake CPUs used the more advanced and optimized Willow Cove cores, but that was rolled out a bit too late to include in Rocket Lake. Instead, uh, Intel is bringing over their new XE graphics engine to the desktop parts. And there you have it, folks. Rocket Lake is a combination of two-year-old CPU cores with their newest generation GPU architecture. Yeah. Now, the move away from the Skylake architecture is huge news, but we have to remember that Sunny Cove was a major failure for Intel. Because of it, Ice Lake CPUs were super late, and when they finally shipped, other than graphics performance, um, they were inferior to the previous generation. They were hot, power hungry, and didn't like higher clock speeds without major increase in transistor leakage. In order to compete with Zen 3, Intel needed super high frequencies. Late last year, Intel launched a much better architecture with Villocove, which is better in every way because you've got IPC, clock speeds, performance per watt, graphics, you name it. More importantly, it hits much higher sustained all-core frequencies at lower voltages. But for the time being, you won't see that on the desktop CPUs, at least not in a while anyways. Now, at this point, you might remember that Ice Lake and Tiger Lake were all based on a 10 nanometer process, uh, but that's not happening with Rocket Lake. Intel took that architecture and backported it to their 14 nanometer plus, 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 plus node. Now, I could go forever talking about why this might be, uh, but it's pretty obvious that Intel's new 10 nanometer super fin isn't ready for desktop CPUs yet. But sticking to 14 nanometers might end up being a bit of a blessing since it's tried, tested, and a true manufacturing process. And in the end, this could all mean good availability from day one. But then again, you can't really tell with these things. And that, my friends, leads us to the i9-11900K, which is the flagship CPU in Intel's desktop lineup. But it only maxes out at just eight cores and 16 threads. And that's a step backwards uh, considering the i9-10900K had 10 cores and 20 threads. And while Intel might say it's different, it's pretty obvious this decision was made to keep temperatures and power in check. Even then, this CPU is going to have an official TDP of 125 watts, but the short duration of PL2 target is going to hit 250 watts, that's for sure. Now, that being said, some of the features of this new platform and CPU are pretty interesting, but let's focus on the processor first. Like I said, the 11900K will get eight cores and 16 threads along with a single core frequency of up to 5.3 gigahertz through Intel's thermal velocity boost algorithm. The all-core turbo should hit around 4.8 gigahertz under optimal conditions, and the official supported memory speed has also been bumped up to 3200 megahertz. Overall, the architecture change leads to a 19% improvement in IPC versus the Comet Lake S10900K, 
but take that number with a huge grain of salt since it's really application dependent and that's why you will see a lot of up to statements uh, in the slides. Now, in terms of actual performance, Intel didn't really say all that much other than to show a few carefully chosen gaming benchmarks against the Ryzen 9 5900X. Personally, I think this means the two CPUs are gonna be evenly matched in gaming, but performance in many other high-level applications will be clearly in AMD's favor due to the core counts. And I think that's gonna continue to be a challenge for Intel, and one they've been more than willing to throw some um, let's just call it creative marketing. So I'm gonna love to see if Rocket Lake is gonna get Intel's real world performance marketing spin like their laptop CPUs did. I mean, with everyday devices, it just makes sense to use apps like Excel, Word, and whatever else for benchmarks, but people buying higher end CPUs just don't care about them because even a basic CPU will take care of those programs without missing a beat, but enthusiasts who are spending $400 or more on a single component care about things like gaming, um, you know, blazing through creative workloads, compiling code, processing effects, and high resolution photos. And for most of that, like it or not guys, the number of cores actually matters big time. Now moving backwards to eight cores leaves Intel's lineup in a pretty bad place for professional use cases, especially. They used to fall back to the HDT X299 platform for higher core count CPUs, but that's pretty much been abandoned and with good reason since AMD can put out a lot more cores at much lower price than Intel can. So is Intel totally screwed? Well, not really. You see, I think the most interesting addition to Rocket Lake is the new XE graphics architecture and updated QuickSync Media Engine. Now, yes, I know this doesn't mean much for a lot of folks since for them, integrated graphics on higher end CPUs is just completely pointless. But for content creators and streamers using specific programs like Premiere or OBS, it's actually huge news because now you'll have better overall performance along with native support for 10-bit 420 AV1 video encoding. QuickSync is always enabled now as well, so no more fiddling around the BIOS for those huge performance boosts uh, when running parallel decode and encode on integrated and discrete graphics. Now, this might end up being one of Intel's biggest advantages over AMD in 2021, since even their APUs will be stuck with Vega graphics. Now, on the platform side, Rocket Lake S will be compatible with existing 400 series motherboards, and it'll offer up to 20 PCI Gen 4 lanes with 16 for the GPU and four for NVMe provided the board actually supports it. And that support is a big question mark since we still don't know how well the Z490 series will support its larger feature set. Now, of course, Intel will also be rolling out new 500 series chipsets that will have native USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 20 gigabits per second ports and a bunch of other features. And that's a relief since we've experienced a ton of issues with Gen 2x2 third-party controllers. As for the rest of the platform, right now we know that there's 20 Gen 4 lanes uh, from Rocket Lake CPU itself, while AMD uh, has 24. But remember that on Ryzen systems, four of those are reserved for communications between the processor and chipset. Meanwhile, for their CPU to PCH communications, Intel's using a updated DMI link with double the bandwidth uh, of the previous generation. Now, the big question mark was what kind of capabilities do the 500 series chipsets bring to the table? And some of that was answered by all the motherboards shown off yesterday. In many ways, Z590 is basically a rehash of Z490 since the PCH still runs Gen 3 lanes, whereas the CPU supplies the PCI Gen 4 capabilities. But with a native Thunderbolt 4 and 20 gigabits per second USB support built right into uh, the chipset, uh, there's no need for secondary controllers. It seems like a good all around platform, but one that AMD has had for years now. Hopefully all of this will lead to Intel having a much more competitive desktop lineup in 2021 and beyond, but there's still a lot of concerns here. First of all, stepping back to eight cores is a pretty big loss, at least from a marketing standpoint, uh, because when your competitor is able to offer 10, 12, or even 16 within the same power envelope, that's, it's a huge question mark. Now, pricing is also another thing that needs to be considered, especially with AMD's eight core 16 thread 5800X sitting around $450, provided you can actually find one. I think this time around, Intel needs to be really aggressive. And I know they hate looking like the budget friendly option, but that might be the only way to get their desktop lineup moving forward. Now, I think price might not actually be the winning factor this year. It may be the company that actually has stock of their products 
uh, because I think they will win in the end regardless of their price. But at this point, it doesn't really matter what side you're on, guys, because as you all know, competition is a really good thing. And with AMD just struggling to create enough Ryzen 5000 series CPUs, uh, the door is just wide open for Intel to use their existing 40 nanometer process to just claw back some of that market share. Will it happen? I don't really know. <laughs> That's why the rest of 2021 is, it's gonna be an interesting year, guys. But let us know what you guys think about Rocket Lake S. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really curious to see what Team Blue has to offer. It's, it's really weird with that flagship eight core 16 thread 11900K, but who knows? It'll be, it's just gonna be interesting. That's all I gotta say. Talk to you guys in the next one, guys. Peace.